<laughs> so um, welcome everybody at seven o'clock. And I know Erin has a lot to chat about today. So we're gonna move pretty quickly through this. Um, as Helen mentioned before, this will be the last History at Home that I'm doing as your host. Um, Aaron and Helen will um, co-host on a tag team uh, mm -hmm. until we actually do hire a new executive director. Um, I want you to know though that History at Homes are going to continue. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I have to say that this series is one of the few positive things that came out of the pandemic. Um, and I've received notes from many people telling me that it really helped them with the isolation that they felt, especially in those really, really early days of the pandemic. Um, and I felt that way too. And I think what was so great about it is the community that we built um, here on these History at Home programs. And we've had people from all over, not just local Montclair folks, but we have our regulars out in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and we've had people from Arizona, Canada, England, Tel Aviv, um, all over the world, really. So it's been really quite an exciting um, experiment in how to do programming for us. And it really has been my honor and privilege to have gotten to be with you and spend the last two, two and a half years with you this way. Um, because that's taking more time, I'm not going to do my normal spiel about donations, but you know that we do love them. So if you do want to send them in by now, you should know how to go about doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and now back to business. Before we get into Aaron's program, I just wanted to say just a couple words on behalf of the staff and the board and, um, you know, say, uh, now who's going to cry? Me? Oh, <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> um, kudos to Jane um, and so very many thanks for this history at home concept, but and also for so many, many other things and so many other initiatives at the Montclair History Center in the past 12 years. Um, we are happy for Jane and her family, and we will definitely be keeping in touch with her. You know, this is um, a surprising transition for us, and and um, but we're confident that we'll be able to continue. We've got terrific staff in the office um, with Erin. We've got great volunteers. Jane will be one of them uh, starting in a couple of weeks, um, and a board that's very committed to finding someone that, um, you know, will bring us to the next stage of of the Montclair History Center's, um, uh, you know, life cycle. So um, thank you, Jane. And um, we are so grateful for you and, uh, and so many things that have been done in the last 12 years and um, best of luck to you. And um, let's not cry, about, let's not cry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Helen, I appreciate that. Um, so can I get back to business? Yes. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So I'm gonna now pin Erin because she's up next. And um, Erin uh, is our collections manager, uh, but she started as an intern with us when she was in Seton Hall's Museum Studies program. And um, she volunteered after her internship was over. And when a museum coordinator position came open, she grabbed it and has been with us ever since. And I think that was what, well, it was it was before COVID. So we know it was at least two and a half years ago that you actually came on staff with us. And her mom is one of our Pennsylvania regulars, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So Erin um, began digging into this, uh, had this idea on her own and said, you know, I'd really love to know more about all of those film crews that we see all over Montclair and what has been filmed. Um, and so she started digging into it. And that's where we come to tonight's presentation. So I saw it today at noon. I had no idea about some of these. I found myself texting my daughter in the middle of it saying, <laughs> did you know? Um, so I think you'll enjoy this very much. And Erin, you can share your screen and get started. Um, so yeah, thank you. So yeah, I have to admit, I am one of those people that when I watch a movie, especially you know when I've been watching movies from home for the past couple of years, I am the type of person who in the middle of the movie, I pull up my phone, I pull up IMDB and I go, where was this filmed? I think I recognize that place, you know? And I just like, I like living, like I love learning the trivia behind movies and, you know, where things were filmed and all that good stuff. So um, when this opportunity came up, I jumped at it because as I was discovering, uh, I was, you know, starting to search and there's really not a comprehensive list of 
places in town that have, you know, movies or TV shows filmed in. Um, I'm also going to cover movies and TV shows that are set in Montclair as well. Um, I really couldn't find a comprehensive list. Now, IMDb does list some of them. Um, there was a wonderful Montclair Magazine article from 2016 that listed, I think it was about 10 of them or so. Uh, but I, you know, was finding way more and I was able to add more. So I'm hoping this becomes more of a comprehensive list. I know I'm going to miss some things. Um, there were some people on the noon talk that, that said, oh, by the way, this one, oh, and this one. So I added a couple more for this evening as well. So this is the more updated version. Um, but yeah, let me hop in. As Jane said, I've got a lot to talk about, so I don't want to miss a minute. So I'm just going to share my screen here. So of course, you know, there's, you know, as Jane mentioned, even today, we can see film trucks filming all over Montclair. Um, and well, of course, I love Montclair. <laughs> Nothing against Montclair, but why Montclair? Why this town amongst the hundreds of thousands of towns across the United States. Why is this one so common, so popular to film at for movies and TV shows? There's a few reasons. Um, one is of course the proximity to New York City. Um, it's very easy for uh, you know people in the in the business and show business who are living in New York City to be able to commute out to this area. Of course, New Jersey all around, but Montclair um, also is helpful with that. Um, I used a couple of sources uh, to for a lot of this research in the background here. Um, both were New York Times articles. One was from 1991, the other was from 1998. Um, I bring that up because I like to quote from some of them. So from the 1991 article, um, Joseph Friedman, who's, who was an executive director of the New Jersey Motion Pictures and Television Development Commission, said, our biggest asset is proximity to New York. Um, he also noted, uh, you know, read, readily available pool of skilled and talented workers, many of whom live in the state were available. So that really, really helped. Um, from the 1998 article, um, it's because of the proximity to Manhattan, most productions don't have to pay technicians and crews for travel time under union contracts. So there's the simple just practicality of it all. Um, and uh, another reason for Montclair, but also New Jersey in general. New Jersey is so diversified in what filming locations you can have. We have small towns, big towns, cities. We've got, you know, woods. We've got you know, the New York skyline. Um, we've got a little bit of everything here. You can almost uh, recreate any part of, you know, the world, anywhere in the world you can almost recreate here in New Jersey with the exception of maybe a desert scene. I think that may be a little tough to recreate here in Jersey, but it's, for the most part, you can recreate almost anything here in Jersey. Um, so that's a huge, huge help. Um, in addition, New Jersey uh, overall, Montclair in particular, has made it very easy to film both in the state and in town. Um, from that 1998 New York Times article, it said town officials and many residents see this as a burnishing Montclair's already glossy image and have greeted the crews who pay handsomely for the privilege to shoot uh, with open arms, a streamlined permit system, and a can-do approach to solving logistical problems. So it really helps knowing that, you know, if you're looking for a place to film, you know Montclair and you know New Jersey is going to be welcome to you filming there. Lastly, related to Montclair specifically, the, the huge homes here are actually really helpful for the film crews. The large ceilings, big rooms allow for those big film crews to be all in one room, not have to worry about fitting. You know, you're able to fit, fit all of the cameras, all the lighting, the director, the cast, the crew. Everybody's able to fit way more easily in these huge, huge homes um, than they would be in a, you know, more regular, you know, smaller homes. Um, so that's, that's another huge asset as well. Um, now, when I was doing my preliminary research, I was kind of going in chronological order just to kind of keep track of everything. And I noticed there was a bit of a gap in the mid 2000s. And I thought that was kind of interesting because you'll see there's a lot in the late 90s and there's a lot more happening now in the past few years. So what was happening in between? Uh, well, in 2005, um, the Garden State created a $10 million tax credit offering at 20% to boost film production throughout the state. But in 2010, partly thanks to Jersey Shore, the MTV reality show. Uh, Chris Christie, who was of course governor at the time, suspended the initiative because of how much he disliked the show. He thought it was putting a bad, bad rep on New Jersey. So he kind of cut that. So that really caused 
a real break and it, and it caused, uh, uh, you know, the incentive to film in New Jersey. And then of course, Montclair, you know, subsequently was gone. Um, so we see a dip, a huge dip in filming in New Jersey during this time. Um, that spiked back up in 2018 um, when Governor Phil Murphy reintroduced a film incentive. Um, and actually found this interesting fun fact, according to Variety Magazine, um, at a Montclair Film Forum in Montclair, New Jersey, the state's Motion Picture and Television Commission Associate Director confirmed that the governor had fulfilled his promise referring to that film incentive. So it seems like the news of that film incentive actually broke right here in Montclair. So that's kind of an interesting, uh, you know, a little fun fact there. So we are back um, since 2018. You'll notice, you'll see on my, um, you know, on my list here that you'll see a spike back up in filming TV shows, movies, commercials, um, commercials are really big filming here in Montclair. Um, you'll see a huge spike in that. So uh, that's, partially thanks to that incentive there. Now we're gonna hop right in. So I'm gonna start with the movies and TV shows that were filmed in Montclair. And I'm gonna go in a chronological order here. So the first one is this movie called Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. Yes, that's the full title. <laughs> that is the full title of the movie. Um, I have to admit, so I did a lot of diving into these movies. Most of the movies and shows I'm talking about today, I had actually not seen before. Um, and it was great, it was expanding my variety of films that I wouldn't have normally picked to watch. So it was really great to get that, you know, expand my, you know, cinematic experience here. Uh, and I have to say, this movie was my favorite movie so far. It's the first one I watched, still my favorite, I have to say. So the story revolves around three drag queens played by Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, and John Leguizamo, who are traveling across the country. They're going to a drag queen, um, uh, not a performance, but a competition, um, I believe in LA. So they're traveling from New York to LA and uh, they halfway across, they get stranded in a middle of nowhere town. Um, it's an absolutely wonderful movie, highly recommended. I think it's on Amazon Prime, so highly recommend. Um, but how, about you know, a quarter of the way into the movie, as they're driving across country, they're passing through a town called Balakinwood in Pennsylvania. And the character Patrick Swayze plays, he grew up in this town. So they're all like, oh, we get to see where uh, where he, this where he got where he grew up, and we get to see how he grew up. So uh, there's a lot of scenes of driving through this town. Um, the town's actually shot in Montclair. Uh, most of the scenes were shot on Upper Mountain Avenue. It's just a lot of drive-bys. Uh, but there's some pretty iconic houses and scenes from Montclair, and I'll show you a few pictures in a second. Uh, before we dive into that, a little bit more fun facts about the movie. So it was number one at the box office for the first two weeks that it opened. Swayze and Leguizamo were both nominated at the 1996 Golden Globe Awards for Best Actor, Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy, and Best Supporting Actor. Shosh mentioned, if you don't really know John Leguizamo from any other role, if you have a young child or you are a fan of Disney, uh, if you've seen Encanto, John Leguizamo is the care is uh, he plays Bruno uh, in that movie. So if you've got a young kid, I'm sure you've seen Encanto and you know we don't talk about Bruno that song. So little connection there. Um, and also, if this movie sounds uh, familiar, closer to home, it was filmed, or not filmed, it was shot at, uh, at not shot, that's not the words I want, it was screened at Lackawanna Plaza last year um, as part of a partnership between Out Montclair and Montclair Film to celebrate LGBTQ stories. Um, so it was actually shown here in town recently. Now, here's a few of the shots. This is the first shot of the town Balak um, It's, I believe this is just a corner right by Eagle Rock. Um, so I kind of, when I first watched this movie, I was like, I think I, think I recognize that street. Um, I have to say before I dive even further, when I found this movie, all I could find online was that it was just shot on Upper Mountain Avenue. No other details, just Upper Mountain Avenue. I was like, okay. So I came into this movie not knowing when, where, what I was gonna see. Um, but it was about this shot that I started to get excited. Cause that's, oh, that's Edgemont Park. <laughs> so this is where I really was like, oh, cool. Okay. So it's not just like a quick, you know, blink and you'll miss it. There's more to it. So they do a quick by drive by Edgemont Park here. 
Um, these are a couple houses that they just point out to really show how extravagant the town is, um, really gives kind of some background to the affluence that Patrick Sweezy's character grew up in. Um, this house in particular proves important because this is the house that Patrick Sweezy's character grew up in. Um, now, I should mention all these houses I pretty much could confirm were on Upper Mountain Avenue, so I could confirm that. Um, now, this is kind of a turning point for his character, so he's driving up, stops at the house, he says, this is my house, this is the one I grew up in, so they're all like dazzled by how big and grand it is, uh, and at that moment, his mother steps out the front door, makes eye contact with Patrick Sweezy's character, he waves very friendly, he's like, oh, hi, mom, and she just shakes her head, turns around, and goes back to the house. She's turning his her back on him. Um, and this upsets him and he ends up making a you know, squealing U-turn to get out of town. He, they quickly leave after that. This is actually the last shot in the movie of Montclair. So it's a big turning point in the movie for his character because he's, you know, there's no turning back. He's got to keep going on with his life, that kind of representation there. Um, now next, uh, another movie came out a couple of years afterwards called In and Out, uh, directed by Frank Oz. It stars Kevin Klein, Tom Selleck, Joan Cusack, Matt Dillon, Debbie Reynolds, and Bob Newhart. Huge cast, big names here. So, you know, big, big cast. Um, the movie uh, looks at the events that unfold in a Midwest town after a high school teacher is outed as gay by a former student during the acceptance of an Academy Award. Um, it's actually based on jo uh, Tom Hanks's uh, his own 1994 Oscar for Best Actor for his portrayal in Philadelphia, where he thanked his gay drama teacher. Um, now, the only difference is in real life, Tom Hanks did ask his former teacher's permission to name him in his speech, whereas in the movie, it's a total shock to Kevin Klein's character, who at the very beginning of the movie, he's engaged to Joan Cusack doesn't think he's gay but all of a sudden everybody in town is watching the academy awards and you know is turning on him and he, they're like you're gay and he's having to say no no i'm not um and he's trying to convince all of his friends and family is not gay um i won't spoil the movie for you um but that's kind of the main difference between the real life and the and the movie it's kind of a you know fantasy of well what would have happened in real life if tom hanks hadn't asked his teacher for permission um and his teacher wasn't out at the time so um, just kind of that look at that. Now, uh, Joan Cusack actually was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in the movie. Now, uh, I'll show you a couple, these couple shots here, and uh, they're kind of they kind of dark, and there's a reason for that. Um, now, I, this was another movie where I kept finding reference to it was filmed in Montclair. I also um, found references that they, it was filmed in Sparta, in Pompton Lakes, and Clinton. So they did a lot of filming here in Montclair, no, in New Jersey but I couldn't figure out where. Now, most of the movies and TV shows I watched that were filmed in there, if they didn't already say, I was able to figure out, just like Tu Wong Fu, I was able to watch it and I perfectly you know, was able to figure out, that's Montclair, I know exactly these places. Not so much with this movie. Um, I watched the entire movie and at the end I went, I, I don't know what was Montclair. Um, I was able to rule out, definitely wasn't the high school. There's, you know, evidence that it was filmed at a at Pompton Lakes High School. So it's not that, maybe it's one of the houses, but frankly, all the houses in the movie look like it could be from anywhere USA, um, which, you know, is one of the appeals of Montclair. Some of the houses, you know, can be substituted for that. Uh, but it was kind of frustrating. So it wasn't until I read the Montclair Magazine edition from May, 2016, that's all about these movies and shows that were filmed in Montclair that I got a little bit more information. Um, according to the article, uh, they used a Victorian with an attractive wood interior and garage with an apartment above it. So I think based off that description, I think it's the scene in the movie where Kevin Klein's character is having his bachelor party because he comes in from the bottom goes up the stairs and then that bottom picture is him in that upstairs room having his bachelor party I would have shown more of the room I gotta be honest it was not PG <laughs> so these were the two shots I could get of this scene that were appropriate uh so that's why it's kind of like close dark shots here uh, but imagine just the whole room of this kind of this wood style here um, I don't know where this is in town. The most I have is a Victorian with an attractive wood interior. Um, and unfortunately by now, you know, this movie was probably filmed in 1996 or 1997. Very much could look very different from this today. Could have gotten paint, could have gotten refinished. 
could even have been torn down at this point. I don't know. So um, I actually don't know where this was in town, but I do know it was definitely here in town. Next is a movie that if you were living in Montclair in 1997, I would be shocked if you hadn't heard about this filming in town uh, because it was Brad Pitt and Harrison Ford. They were both in town shooting and they shot a lot of scenes here in Montclair. Um, so I'd be very surprised if, if you were here in 1997 and didn't hear about this happening. So uh, the movie's called The Devil's Own. It uh, tells the story of a police officer played by Harrison Ford who uncovers the real identity of his house guest, an IRA terrorist played by Brad Pitt in hiding. Um, in the movie, Harrison Ford's home is a home here in Montclair. Both the exterior and the interior shots were filmed at the same house. Um, and then later on, we get to meet where Harrison Ford's wife, played by Margaret Collin, who is actually a Montclair resident, um, where she works is actually Wachung Plaza. It's an office at Wachung Plaza. Kind of interesting, uh, side note with Margaret Collin, I was able to find that she moved to Montclair in the late 1990s. Now, whether she moved to Montclair after filming this movie because she was so enamored by the town and wanted to stay, or maybe she moved before the movie started filming and she influenced the location manager to choose Montclair to film in, I don't know. Um, you know, it'd be a real nice commute if you're filming in the same town that you live in. I mean, that would be nice. So I wasn't able to confirm which way, but uh, just kind of an interesting side note there. A um, couple of shots here I'll show you. So this is a shot from the movie. This is of Margaret Collins' work. She works at Windsor Real Estate. Um, and at one point, Harrison Ford's character comes and picks her up. Now, this is the same location today, what it looks like today. Um, you'll notice that the Montclair Music Studio sign and Montclair Music Studio has not changed like at all since then. Uh, what I found interesting watching the movie is the shot you see there, I didn't trim it off at all on the left. They deliberately stopped the camera at the perfect spot so Montclair can't be seen in the shot. So uh, the movie seems to indicate that they, if the family lives either in New York City in like a suburb of New York City, or just you know somewhere close to New York City because Harrison Ford is a police officer in New York City. Um, so they don't actually ever say where. So I guess they wanted to keep it ubiquitous, therefore didn't want any town names appearing. Um, but I just find that interesting there. Now, uh, this is a shot towards the beginning of the movie where Brad Pitt's character is being taken to Harrison Ford's house. Um, he's under the guise of being a contractor and needs some place to stay. And there's connections because Harrison Ford's character, uh, I think the, his parents were Irish or he has Irish lineage and Brad Pitt's character is Irish. So there's connections there. Um, so this is uh, Edgemont Road. Uh, if you know this part of Edgemont Road where there's two one ways going on, there's like a little park in the center. This is the one part of the one way and that's the park there on the right hand side. So they're kind of coming down Edgemont Road here. And then here's Harrison Ford's house in the movie. That's Brad Pitt walking up the sidewalk there. Um, and here's the house today. Um, looks pretty similar. Um, now from that Montclair Magazine article, just a little bit of behind the scenes uh, information here. Uh, the location manager said he wanted a well-kept American middle-class house, and it was nice that it was a little excursion to the small business district, referring to Watchung Plaza there. Um, now, they had to make several adjustments to the house, uh, with, where crew members worked in multiple rooms. The filmmakers built a front porch and put a hole through the kitchen wall to create a window. The house next door was the quote, wrong color. So they made a deal with the owners to hire their painter, change the color and restore the original when they were done. Sometimes Kramer says, um, who was the location manager, homeowners were put up in a hotel for several days. They were always invited to watch the filming though on occasion crowd control was necessary especially with Harrison and Pitt, um, you know, being at the height of their careers at that time. So I'm sure a bunch of crowd control was necessary. Um, now, interesting. So they mentioned having to put that hole in the wall of the kitchen to put a window. Here's that shot from the movie. It's the back of the house. Now that window on the left-hand side, that's the window they had to input. I took a little look on Google Street View. Um, and interestingly, that window was no longer there. So I'm not sure if they had a deal just like how they had to change the paint color for the neighbor's house and they paid to have it painted back to its original color. Maybe they paid to have this window installed and then they paid to have it taken back to its, you know, original, you know, no window um, wall there. Not sure, but I did find that interesting that the homeowners didn't want to keep the window for whatever reason. So 
Next, we've got Mean Girls. Uh, if you're a millennial like me, I'm sure you're a big fan of this movie. I watched this a lot as a kid. Um, it stars Lindsay Lohan, Rachel McAdams, Amanda Seyfried, who you might know from Mamma Mia. Tim Meadows, Amy Poehler, and Tina Fey, all SNL alumni. Um, and Tina Fey also wrote the script. Um, here's a description from IMDb on the movie if you haven't seen it. Katie Heron, played by Lindsay Lohan, is a hit with the plastics, the A-list girl click at her new school, until she makes the mistake of falling for Aaron Samuels, the ex-boyfriend of alpha plastic Regina George. That's the most dramatic description of that movie I've ever heard, but <laughs> pretty good description. That's pretty much the plot. Um, now, this movie uh, was filmed at Montclair High School. It was the interior shots, the exterior shots, I believe were filmed in Canada. Most of this movie was actually filmed in Canada. So I found it very interesting that they decided to do the interior shots at Montclair High School. Now, I, if you don't know Mean Girls from having seen the movie, you might know it from the various memes that have traveled the internet since it came out in 2004. So I just have a few examples here. You may recognize some of the um and you know my personal favorite on Wednesdays we wear pink <laughs> I did wear pink earlier today but of course it's Thursday so I was off a day that's right um now some in, here are the interior shots from the movie featuring high school hallways the high school bathroom and then the cafeteria now funnily enough so I've never actually been in Montclair High School but I have some Montclair High School interns with us um, who started actually this week so I said hey by the way I just want you to look at the scenes from the movie and let me know are these the hallway scenes I wanted to confirm that these were the same scenes and the same if this was definitely the interior of Montclair High School and and she goes to me she goes this is a debate that we have every year actually is what scenes were filmed in the school <laughs> so apparently uh it's not really known I don't know um, you know, since I guess 2004, the, the knowledge has been lost, at least amongst the students and teachers. Uh, but they, her theory was at probably the cafeteria scene, which you can see in the bottom left corner there, that was probably what was filmed in Montclair High School. She wasn't sure about the hallways and the bathrooms, uh, but she thought that was probably it. And then the cafeteria was probably renovated immediately afterwards. Um, so it doesn't look like that at all today. That was another issue they were having was you know, renovation. It's hard to tell, you know, is this the same place? It just looks very different. So um, interesting, even the students today can't confirm for me or not. Um, forgot to mention at the beginning, if you know any additional information, you know, any other movies I haven't mentioned, if you know for sure, you know, if Mean Girls was shot, they used the hallway scenes that those were shot at Montclair High School, any other details like that, please let me know. You can put it in the chat. Um, I'd love to be able to, you know, pinpoint some things like this, because um, I, I scoured the internet and I was not able to confirm, unfortunately. I don't know if you could hear that. That was the bump bump from Law and Order. If you're a fan of Law and Order, you're very familiar with that sound. Um, so actually two episodes of Law and Order Special Victims Unit were filmed in Ma Claire. Uh, the first one was from season five, episode 25, entitled Head. It was the season finale of uh, Law and Order that year. Also filmed at Montclair High School. Little side fun fact about that episode, it's the highest rated SVU episode ever. Um, at first I saw that on IMDb and I went, really? I mean, this show's been on and it's still on today. This can't still be the highest rated episode. Oh no, it is, it is. Um, it's still got the highest ratings with 18.36 million. Um, so interesting little side note there about the number of people who have now seen the interior of Montclair High School. Um, now the episode centers around a school principal who stops her pedophilia once a brain tumor is removed. That is the height of television right there. Uh, that is some drama right there. So um, the episode ends kind of on a little bit of a cliffhanger, but um, here are the shots in particular. So we've got the band room from Montclair High and the hallway scene there. Um, these two, my high school student that wasn't sure about Mean Girls, Sally's and immediately went, yes, that's Ma Claire High. <laughs> so she had no doubts about that. So I was able to confirm from her. Now the other episode is from season eight, episode 17 entitled Sin. Um, from based off that picture, if you've ever been to the Montclair Art Museum or if you've ever done their Build Montclair and Legos Day, you're very familiar with Lear Hall there. And yes, that was that scene was filmed in Lear Hall. That was a great example of when I was watching, you know, movies and shows. I didn't even have to look that up. I saw that scene. I went, oh, yep, I know exactly where that is. I know that very well. 
Um, this episode centers around a gay male sex worker who's murdered and the investigation that reveals that a pastor who preaches extreme intolerance towards homosexuals may have had a relationship with him. So one of those extra drama episodes there. Now we've got some honorable mentions. I have to say, don't worry, I'm gonna to get to the Sopranos. I didn't forget, forget the Sopranos, it's coming up, but I just wanted some honorable mentions before I get to them. Um, these were some movies where I either wasn't really able to pinpoint exactly where in town it was filmed. Um, one addition I made since this, uh, since the noon lecture was the trial of the Chicago seven that came out in 2020. All I could find was that there were shots filmed in Montclair. I wasn't able to pin down what locations, what shots, what scenes. Um, so there were some like that. Others uh, were just the generic, you know, lime life, um, imaginary heroes, um, May, oh, and the perfect age of rock and roll, all filmed at Montclair High School. Montclair High School, very popular place to film, apparently. Uh, I did find that usually what they did was they either just sectioned off a part of the school, closed it off from the rest of the school so they weren't disturbing classes taking point, um, taking place, or they just filmed in the evening or at night when classes were done. So there wasn't, as far as I could tell, there weren't any major interruptions with the classes going on. Um, and then, of course, I also included Kitchen Nightmares. It's a reality show, but I thought, you know, it's one of the reality shows that I was able to find was filmed in Montclair. So I, I had to include it here. <laughs> now, here we go. Here we get to The Sopranos. I would have input the theme song here, but uh, once this video goes on YouTube, I didn't want to get copyright struck. Uh, so just sing this, the theme song in your head if you know it. Um, of course, The Sopranos ran from 1999 to 2007. Uh, follows the story of Tony Soprano and his family and his life as a mafia, mafia boss living in New Jersey. Um, so this is a great example of um, a show slash, you know, show movie, whatever, that was filmed in Montclair, but also has scenes set in Montclair as well. So first, we're just going to talk about the scenes that were filmed in Montclair. And oh boy, there's a lot of them. Um, so I actually got all of this from a, a website, I believe it's called sopranoslocations.com. Some wonderful group of people have gone through episode by episode of The Sopranos and have located not just Montclair, but all the locations in New Jersey where The Sopranos was filmed and they put the exact location, um, street address if they could, if, if not at least the street or the street corner and exactly you know, what scene was shot there and you know what exact episode was shot there as well. So this is an overview of the all the ones that were listed on the website. They may have been missing some, but this was all that was on there that I could find. I have to admit, I have never watched The Sopranos. I watched the movie that came out last year, but I did not, I've never seen an episode of The Sopranos. So I had to rely on this website and rely on my fiance who has seen the show uh, to kind of fill me in on some details. So um, I apologize if any of you gasped at that sound. <laughs> so just a couple of shots. So there were a lot of scenes filmed here, but this is probably the most important scene filmed in Montclair for the show for context, um, because a uh, big part of the show is Tony Soprano is, has to start seeing a therapist, start seeing a psychiatrist, but he wants to keep that hidden. Um, he doesn't want his enemies to know. He doesn't want anybody else to know. So what he does is he goes through this donut shop as if he was just there to buy donuts, coffee. And then he goes through, sneaks out the back and at the back of this donut shop is a little alley. And on the other side is the back entrance to the psychiatrist's office. So this ends up being a pretty big role in the show. And it's actually the sh um, one of the shots of um, uh, the first assassination attempt on Tony Soprano's life is actually this street here. So this is actually Midland Avenue. Um, here is what that looks like today. It's today a uh, tattoo parlor. Looks a little different, um, but you can kind of still see that the alcove looks pretty similar. Um, you know, the structure, the brick on top, especially um, you matches up. So a uh, little bit of change over time, but the pretty significant location in the Sopranos world. Just a couple other scenes that were shot in and around. Um, we got Tyranny's Tavern. We've got 88 South Mountain Avenue, um, which in the show is actually a brothel. <laughs> um, so I just chose an outside shot for that one. Um, and then we have the corner of Orange Road and Washington Avenue here. Few more shots here. We've got the former Charles Bierman House for Seniors. Uh, if you've ever been in the house, they've got that iconic stairwell in the center there. So you can kind of see that stairwell through the oh, door. Come right on. 
Next, we've got Church Street here, just a little shot of Church Street. And then lastly, Upper, Mont uh, Upper Montclair Country Club. Now, of course, technically Upper Montclair Country Club is in Clifton, but it plays a significant role in the show. You can see um, it's in numerous seasons, numerous episodes. It keeps coming back uh, in the show. So I've had to include it here. Uh, and then lastly, a shot of Applegate Farm. And actually you can see Applegate Farm on the cup right there. So um, this was in a later season, season six, um, where they're at Applegate Farm and he's enjoying a, what looks like a delicious Sunday, I have to say. Now this transitions into the next section here, movies and TV shows set in Montclair. And as I mentioned, Montclair not only filmed, or The Sopranos not only filmed in Montclair, but it was also had some scenes set in Montclair as well. Um, the picture here is actually from probably one of the more famous Montclair set movies, Cheaper by the Dozen from 1950. Um, little, I'll go more into Cheaper by the Dozen in a little bit, but a little side fun fact while we're looking at the house. This is the house that the family moves into in Montclair. Um, the house itself was actually Judy Garland's family house from Meet Me in St. Louis, which came out about six years earlier. Uh, Fox Studios didn't have an appropriate standing outdoor set, so they rented time on the St. Louis Street on MGM lot number two. Um, so if you recognize that house, not from that movie, you might recognize it from Meet Me in St. Louis. Now back to Sopranos real quick. So in universe, Montclair is mentioned a couple of times. We've got Tony's wife, Carmela, uh, is actually a graduate of Montclair State. Um, and then most significantly, uh, Tony's psychiatrist is somewhere in Montclair. It's never actually said where her office is located. Um, I did a little sleuth thing. And, you know, in the show, as I mentioned, he goes through that donut shop, exits out the back, goes through a little alley to get to the back door of the psychiatrist's office. Couldn't really find that off of, you know, behind the donut shop. There doesn't seem to be an alley that matches that as far as I could tell. Um, and from elsewhere I could find, it seems that her office seems to be set somewhere off of Bloomfield Avenue. So I couldn't pin down an exact location, unfortunately, um, but it seems to be somewhere off Bloomfield Avenue, which Midland Avenue is off Bloomfield Avenue. So that, you know, that does match up. They got pretty close to that. So, um, and of course, here's actually the shot of him entering through the back door and it says Montclair Physician Suites there. Um, this is a great, also chose this shot in particular because now we're closing the door on the Sopranos here. And we're gonna go on and move on to our next movie that was set in Montclair, Cheaper by the Dozen here. So this one, uh, Cheaper by the Dozen filmed in 1950. I grew up knowing the 2003 Steve Martin version, which is vastly different. So the 1950 version is based off of the 1948 book by Frank Bunker Gilbreth Jr. and Ernestine Gilbreth Carey, the children, two of the children of uh, Frank Gilbreth. Uh, if you don't know the original plot of the book and the movie, uh, it tells the story of time and motion study and efficiency experts, Frank Bunker Gilbreth and Lillian Mahler Gilbreth. And of course, they're 12 kids. Lillian, the Gilbreths were a real family that lived in Montclair and really were motion study and efficiency experts. Um, they, this, the book is really their life. It's, it's a true story. Uh, the movie, I think, embellishes you know, a few things. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more about Montclair's role in the movie in a little bit. But uh, it really is a true story. If you're interested in knowing, uh, learning more about the Gilbreths, um, we actually did a History at Home program on them that you can find on our YouTube page. Um, so I won't go into any more details here on the Gilbreths, but fascinating family, fascinating story. I highly recommend checking it out. Now in the book slash movie, um, the family is living in Providence, Rhode Island. And at the very beginning of the movie, the father announces that they're moving to Montclair, New Jersey. Um, partially they get a bigger home in Montclair. And I think it's also to expand his career as a motion study and efficiency expert. Now Montclair in the book, because you know it's based off of the children's lives growing up, a lot more specific locations are mentioned in the book. In the movie, Montclair's only really said out loud a few times and no other specific locations are referenced in the movie, which I found a little curious. It's based off the book. The book only came out two years before. You could just mention Nishwain School. You could mention Eagle Rock Way, but they don't. Um, they only have Montclair as like a, almost a background to it. Um, and I'll, I'll show you some shots from the movie where that's literally the case. Um, now in the book, 
Uh, there are specific mentions to locations in town, um, such as Nishwain School, where uh, Frank Gilbreth ignored the boys and girls entrance, the Wellmont Movie Theater, Montclair High School, where Frank chaperoned the dance as the father, uh, Eagle Rock Way, where their 14-room home stood, which unfortunately was torn down in 1941, and Lackawanna Train Station, where Spoiler alert, even though it's been 72 years, um, Frank Gilbreth does die very tragically, very quickly and suddenly in a phone booth at Lackawanna Station as he's about to board the train. Um, he died in 1924. Uh, it's kind of a shock in the movie. The movie comes off as a very uh, fun comedy. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I think it's on Amazon Prime, I believe. Um, I really enjoyed watching it. It was very funny. I laughed out loud a lot. Um, and it was quite a shock. I knew it was coming, but it was still such a tonal shock at the end when Frank's character dies. And it's off screen, uh, but it's so sudden. And the movie ends with the family trying to figure out what to do. Um, the mother, Lillian, really rallying, rallying the troops and saying, we're going to get through this. I'm going to make this work. And all the kids step up and say, we're going to make this work. And Lillian uh, in real life and also, you know, in the movies, able to keep her family together. Uh, so it's, it's a nice, it's a heartwarming ending, but man, it was a shock when Frank uh, dies quite suddenly. Now, as I said, Montclair plays like a background role in the movie. And in these couple of shots, you can see it literally takes a background role. This Montclair High pennant is seen in like two or three different scenes. So they clearly just took the same pennant and just put it up when they needed like a little bit of background there. So uh, Montclair High School, I think is mentioned once, um, not really said much, um, but you know, it's referenced in the pennant there. Um, when their eldest daughter is going out to prom, her date is coming to pick her up in this obnoxious car um, and you can kind of see in little small on the far left it says Montclair High 49 Trenton zero um, clearly referring to some recent football game where Montclair High triumphed um, I have yet to I didn't do a little cross, cross reference to see if that was an actual score uh, from around that time I, I should check that now I'm curious but um, you know that's another little reference there and then lastly the prom scene at the end you can see way in the back Montclair High School but that's really it they really don't really say Montclair out loud too much and as I said they don't reference anything specific even at the end when Frank, Frank Gilbreth goes off to the train station they just say the Montclair train station they don't even say Lackawanna Plaza. So uh, only if you read the book or you knew these background things, would you know to kind of look for these and you knew the references. Um, but otherwise Montclair kind of plays like a background role in these movies or this movie, I should say. Um, the 2003 Steve Martin version, of course, is very different. Montclair is not at all in that version at all. Um, very, very different plot, very modernized and all that. So this is, this is the disc cheaper by the dozen version is truthful to the novel for the most part. A couple other mentions here. We've got Analyze This from 1999. Uh, tells the story of a crisis-stricken mafioso, played by Robert De Niro, who solicits the assistance of a reluctant psychiatrist, played by Billy Crystal. Now, uh, this is one of the things that was filmed at, and I believe it's mentioned in the movie as well that he lives in Montclair. I think it's kind of referenced or at least you know vaguely referred to. Uh, but so it's the uh, Billy Crystal's character uh, lives at uh, this house, which is 538 Park Street. Um, this is the shot in the movie that shows the house and you'll see a very distinct, I'll see if my mouse shows up, um, very distinct kind of rounded part to the porch there. And of course that yellow color. Um, this is what the house looks like today. And you can see that rounded part to the porch there as well. So um, this movie has 538 Park Street, a um, little bit of you know, behind the scenes here from the Montclair Magazine article. Uh, according, apparently, according to their uh, location manager, Paul Kramer, they were actually going to use a totally different home. Um, they wanted a nice suburban home, which had a big yard. Uh, Vitti, De Niro's character, gives Crystal's character, Sobel, a fountain as a gift. And we were going to have to move the homeowner's rose garden to another person's property. But then Billy Crystal joined the pre-production team and he said, no, the gag is that the fountain needs to be in a tiny yard so that it's bizarre and ridiculous. We had to say, sorry, ma'am, we have to put the roses back. <laughs> Kramer recalls another gift to delivery from the mafia, mafia Don, Tony Bennett, whom they filmed singing inside the Upper Montclair home. Um, I'll show you the scene in a second. He's actually outside the home. He's not singing in the home. Um, but I, I do hope it's one of those instances where the homeowners were allowed to stay on set while, while that was filming so they could meet Tony Bennett. Um, here's the scene. 
Um, so yes, that's that giant fountain there. I believe this is the back of the house, uh, but you can see the fountain is almost as tall as the house. Um, and then you can see the stage there on the left. That's where Tony Bennett is singing there. So it's not in the house, but you know, close enough. Um, so that's, you know, the, the funny gag there's this giant fountain that was given to them in a yard that's too tiny for it. <laughs> um, and then of course, if you know that movie, you know the sequel, analyze that. Um, you know, all the characters come back here now. Billy Crystal's character is now actually on Wayside Place and that's the home um, in real life. That's the home from, I think it was like a Google Street View picture that I took. Uh, 23 Wayside Place is where his character lives at now. A few honorable mentions here. Uh, we've got Hot Times at Montclair High. Uh, it's an R-rated movie and it's probably exactly what you're thinking. So I'm going to skip ahead to Touch by an Angel. Um, I used to watch the show all the time when I was a kid. So when I heard there was mention of Montclair, I, was, I hopped right on it. Now, IMDb was annoyingly vague and just had Montclair mentioned in its description and i was like okay did they film in montclair is the episode set in montclair what's going on so i had to watch the episode and it's not until about five minutes until the end of the episode where i got i got my clue and i got my answer the main character in the episode is a post postal man and he's looking at a, a shipping label that says 1564 griffith street montclair new jersey 07156 well, first of all, <laughs> 1564 Griffith Street does not exist in Montclair. Uh, second off, 07156, that's a completely made up zip code. Not even one that's like not true to Montclair. It is a made up zip code. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, and I found that interesting. I'm like, why would you make Montclair, New Jersey, which is a real town, the setting for this, but make up a fake zip code? I understand making up an address. You don't want fans of the show bothering homeowners, taking pictures of their home or anything. But why make up the zip code? I thought that was interesting. It's especially interesting because the episode writer and a, and a writer, a regular writer on the show, R.J. Bob Collery, was born in Montclair in 1957. And not just born in Montclair, his father was also born and raised in Montclair. And his whole family is in show business. Um, Bob's father was Robert, who was the head writer for Captain Kangaroo for 20 years. And Rob, uh, Bob's brother, Michael, was the screenwriter and producer of Face Off and Laura Croft Tomb Raider. All of them were born and raised in Montclair. So I found it interesting that he paid a little homage to his hometown, but then made up a zip code. I just thought that was kind of interesting. So next off, another personal, you know, fun favorite of mine is uh, The Nanny Diaries. It's a rom-com from 2007 starring Scarlett Johansson. Quick mention of Montclair in here. She, at the beginning of the movie, mentions she's a recent graduate of Montclair State University. So that's the quick reference there. Uh, in 2007, there was a movie called Montclair that came out. Um, very, it was a low budget movie, very quiet, uh, but it's actually filmed and set in Montclair. Uh, here's a description from IMDb. As friends all cope with the struggle of their own households, they gently collide with one another for better or worse. Interspersed with appearances by Montclair's actual residents, this rich story employs fictional and non-fictional techniques to depict American suburbia with honesty and naturalism. And they actually filmed in Montclair over 19 days. Um, I couldn't really find much else on this movie. I think it was a very, very small movie. Um, but I, you know, it's called Montclair, set in, in filmed in Montclair. I, of course, had to include it. Lastly, uh, this movie called The Orange Years, The Nickelodeon Story. It's a documentary on how the channel Nickelodeon started. Um, this one really didn't fit anywhere, so I put it here. But the connection to Montclair is that when Nickelodeon was starting off as a channel, they wanted to do some studies and see what would kids actually want to watch? What did kids want to watch on television and what would they actually be entertained by? So in the documentary, they specifically mentioned that they had a deal with Watch on School to go in and talk to the kids, ask them questions about what they wanted to watch and really get an idea of what kind of programming they would want to see. No other schools are mentioned in the documentary. They specifically say we had a deal with Watch on School to talk to the kids. Uh, and so I don't know if any other schools were involved, if it really was just watch on the school that they went to. So that was, that was a kind of cool connection there to Montclair. So uh, we helped, we helped create the Nickelodeon channel, you know, pretty cool. <laughs> now I'm going to go into some actors and actresses that have lived and currently live in Montclair just to wrap up here, but I can't go forward without, of course, mentioning Alan Dumont. Uh, he what manufactured and sold the first commercially, commercially practical television set 
to the public in 1938. Um, so of course we wouldn't have all these TV shows that were filmed in Montclair without him. Um, he suffered from polio as a child and his family moved to Montclair when he was 13, um, partially because of the indoor year round pool available at the local YMCA that would help him recover from his polio. Graduated from Montclair High School in 1919, started his own company, the Allen B. Dumont Laboratories in the basement of his upper Montclair home, building long lasting cathode ray tubes. Uh, he died in 1965 and is buried in Mount Hebron Cemetery and the Television Center at Montclair State University bears his name and produces his programs for the NJTV system. So before I moved forward, I of course had to mention Allen Dumont. Now, some actors that have lived in Montclair, um, we've of course got Olympia Dukakis and her husband, Louis Zorick. Um, they, Montclair actually held a parade for Olympia when she won uh, in 1987, when she won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Moonstruck, that share movie. Um, and the two, um, Louis and Olympia, both co-founded the whole theater company in Montclair, which became New Jersey's first residential professional theater. Uh, the two only lived in Montclair from, not only, but they lived in Montclair from 1970 to 1999. Cal Penn uh, was born in Montclair. You may know him from his Harold and Kumar movies, or if you're a fan of the TV show House, uh, he played Dr. Lawrence Kuttner. Uh, if you're a fan of that show, you may remember his character was very abruptly killed off and kind of in a gruesome manner. Um, and the reason for that was that Cal Penn in real life was uh, offered the role as assistant director of the White House Office of Public Engagement and Intergovernmental Affairs under the Obama administration. Um, so he decided to take a pause on the acting career to go do that instead. And I don't blame him. Um, and here is Bruce Willis, and yes, that is Yogi Berra there on the right. Um, I'll explain while they're in graduation garb. Uh, now, Bruce Willis actually attended Montclair State University, but never ended up graduating. Um, so in 1996, he and Yogi Berra at the same time were given uh, honorary degrees at the 1996 commencement. So that's why they're both in that graduation garb and hanging out together. A uh, couple more mentions here. Um, we've got Sterling Hayden, who you may know from Dr. Strangelove or his role as police, a corrupt police captain in The Godfather. Uh, he was born in Montclair in 1916. Roscoe Orman, who played Gordon Robinson on Sesame Street from 1974 to 2016. Christina Ritchie, uh, she may know her from her role in Mermaids from 1990. She played Wednesday Adams in the Adams Family movies, and she was also in Casper. Her family moved to Montclair, where she grew up attending Edgemont Elementary School, Glenfield Middle School, and Montclair High. And lastly, Ben Rosenfield, if you're a fan of Boardwalk Empire, that's his most well-known role. Um, raised in Montclair, he attended Glenfield Middle School, and he graduated from Montclair High School in 2010. Uh, now, a few, just a quick mention here, uh, a number of soap opera stars have lived and live in Montclair currently. So I'm just going to go through them real quick here. So we've got Kim Zimmer, Vincent Irizarry, uh, Eva LaRue, Jake Weary, and let me find my notes here, Justin Dias and his wife. Margaret Collin, who I've mentioned before. Um, they're in a variety of, you know, the soap, soap operas from Guiding Light to All My Children to As the World Turns. Uh, but there's a number of these soap opera stars living in Montclair. So I had to mention them. And lastly, glitz and glamour today. So we've got, you, you know, if you live in town, you may know, of course, Stephen Gilbert lives in town. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, he actually shot his show, The Late Show, from his house. And here's actually a shot of him in his backyard. Eventually, he moved inside. Um, but he, the first, I think, week or two, if not more, um, he shot outside his home here in Montclair. Uh, we've also got uh, Frankie Faison, a personal favorite of mine, because I'm a huge fan of the Hannibal Lecter movies and shows. Um, so he played Barney Matthews, who was the head orderly in Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal, and Red Dragon. Um, he was also deputy commissioner and then later commissioner Irvin Burrell in the HBO series The Wire. Um, he actually recently received an honorary doctor of fine arts degree from Montclair State back in 2017, um, and his two daughters actually attended and graduated Montclair State as well. Next, we've got Delroy, um, 
let me find my notes. Delroy Lindo. Um, I actually got corrected. I wasn't sure when I did my noon presentation if he still lived in town, but somebody said, actually, he lives down the street from me. So yes, I can confirm he still lives in town. Um, he's a Tony and three-time SAG Award nominee. Uh, in 2009, he won the double NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series for his role in Law and Order SVU. There's Law and Order SVU coming back up again. Um, if you're a Marvel fan, he's going to be in the upcoming Blade movie. I think that comes out either next year or the year after. Uh, next, we've got Patrick Wilson um, and his wife. Sorry, I've got to find my notes here. Um, da, 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 Patrick Wilson and his wife, Dagmara Dominicic. Uh, you might know Patrick Wilson from his role as Raoul in Phantom of the Opera from the 2005 movie. He also plays Ed Warren in the Conjuring movies, those horror movies. Um, and then he also played Aquaman's evil half-brother in the recent Aquaman movies. Now, his wife, Dagmara, is best known for her role in the TV show Succession. Um, that's where that shot was taken from there. A few more pieces here. Um, Steven Spielberg actually stayed in town. He stayed at the George um, back in 2018, 2019, um, back when he was auditioning uh, Rachel Zegler for the role of Maria in his West Side Story remake. She, Rachel Zegler didn't live in town. She lived over in Clifton. Um, but here's actually a picture of the guest book from the George that shows Steven Spielberg signing the guest book back in 2019. If you watched the Super Bowl this year, you may have recognized this commercial, this Amazon commercial starring Colin Jost and his wife, Scarlett Johansson. Uh, it's for Amazon and it was shot in a, an, a house on Eagle Rock Way. And then most, most recently, um, this was kind of a buzz with all these stars filming for this movie. It's called Maybe I Do. It comes out, I believe next year, uh, but it stars William H. Macy, you can see there, Diane Keaton, Richard Gere, Susan Sarandon, Emma Roberts, and Luke Bracey. And most of these stars have been seen all around town. Um, so uh, kind of excitement here. Uh, the movie follows a young couple who have researched, who've reached the point in their relationship where they are considering next steps. They decide to invite their parents to finally meet and to offer some understanding of why marriage works. Except the parents already know one another quite well, which leads to some very distinct opinions about the value of marriage. This sounds like a good movie. I'm actually excited for it. Um, the movie was filmed all over Montclair, actually. Filmed on a colonial house, a six-bedroom colonial facing Edgemont Park. Filmed at the MC Hotel, at the George, and at 54 South Mountain Avenue. So kind of all over Montclair. And that's a wrap. So I'm going to stop sharing here. I'm going to see if there's any comments in the chat box, any questions that came up during my talk here. And of course, if you have any questions, please just unmute yourself or you can put it in the chat and either myself or Jane will be able to uh, read it out. Thanks, Evan, that was Montclair. great. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Oh yes, Loverboy, I forgot to mention. Yes, it was filmed at Bradford School. I think in the movie, they just changed the name to Bradford Academy. They didn't get- I don't even know if they said what the name was. The, it, the school oh, okay. used to be named Bradford Academy. Ah. And then it went back to Bradford School. Yeah, both my kids were extras. My son was like a bad boy who was in the principal's office. And um, and, my, and the kids were out on the playground, a bunch of, it was like on a school, it was like over teacher's convention or something. So there wasn't anything going on. The principal and her- kids were there and in fact the principal's son like we had to shoot this one scene on the playground about nine million times and um and then you know so it was all quiet they're waiting to go and and her son yelled i hate the movies <laughs> so he was excused <laughs> yeah so that was kevin bacon and his wife kara sedgwick right. and um yeah that was interesting jan do you remember that I was also teaching at Edgemont when they we did a Com Campbell Soup several commercials, and I was right on the portico over the top, and they would just the kids would come in and out and in and out, and they had to go over and over and over, and we had to stay in the classroom, you know, all the time. So it was. You have to say, I think one of the New York Times articles I read did mention that Montclair does a lot of commercials. Wow. There's a lot of commercials filmed here. And actually, Mike Fairley uh, emailed me earlier today. He's our town historian. He's on our board. And he said, he, there's a Geico commercial where a woman is being haunted by ghosts. Mm -hmm. And he swears the house is in Montclair. But he's <laughs> trying to figure out which house. But I wouldn't be surprised. There are a lot of commercials. So yeah. <laughs> well, I had Christina Ricci in third grade at Edgemont that same year that they were doing those commercials. Mm -hmm. And what I really remember is that she was little, she was a tiny, tiny kid. And she could read like a house of fire with any kind of accent, with any kind of everything. Mm -hmm. And we took a field trip in um, to New York City 
and my mother was a, a sponsor, you know, she went along with us. And they left me in the city by myself with all the rest of the class to go off for, <laughs> go off for an audition or something. And, and I had just moved there and I really didn't <laughs> had to deal with the bus and being in New York City with class of kids. It was fine. They had just moved to Montclair then. <laughs> That's oh, that's too funny. That's so cool. I didn't know you knew you knew Christina Ritchie. That's so cool. Nice. Well, and she's done a lot more since, but yeah, I know she's third grade. That's been a while back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Yeah. Experiences. Yeah, Jane, I I have one. Um, uh, a couple of things relating to the Sopranos. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Jennifer Melfi's residence was mm -hmm. on North Mountain Avenue, across from Anderson Park. And, you know, I, I didn't, as with you, Aaron, I, I'm not much of a Sopranos viewer, uh, barely watched it. So I, I'm not familiar with the scenes of her entering or leaving her house, but I've been on the shoot where, you know, the entire length of Anderson Park on North Mountain Avenue was filled with vehicles, uh, you know, the food trucks, you know, you know, camera equipment, et cetera, to probably just for a, like a 90 second shot. Right. Um, and tying in with the Sopranos, there was a council member mm -hmm. on the Montclair Township Council who tried to ban the Sopranos from filming in Montclair because he perceived that it was uh, um, uh, uh, presenting Italian Americans in a bad light like organized crime or the mafia. Uh, I don't believe he got a second on his uh, <laughs> announcement to yeah. try to bar probably the number one popular show on cable <laughs> at the time. I do remember, I, I forgot to look into it. I got distracted by a lot of other movies and TV shows um, that I remember after there was a particularly violent scene filmed I don't remember if in Montclair proper or in the surrounding areas that um, there was something brought to the town about like maybe no more violent scenes filmed in town mm -hmm. or at least you know yeah. limiting the the amount of violence shown mm -hmm. um, in, in in shows and movies filmed in town so I, I didn't I, I didn't get to a chance to look into it but I do remember this discussion yeah yeah I'm not surprised so, <laughs> Sopranos when you know with hbo you know being a, a cable show they went full fully for the violence a lot so. <laughs> okay, well any other any other anybody have any other experiences or any questions or did you recognize anywhere oh i see somebody in the chat here well, patty I said didn't... ryzen filmed a commercial on my street claridge court years ago on my way walking to the train for work i came face to face with a busload of the network people and the can you hear me now kyle oh, that's so funny <laughs> It's still funny how he kind of became a celebrity in of his own right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Oh. All right. Any other final closing comments before we leave? Really okay. interesting, Aaron. Thank you. Yeah. I think I was most excited to uh, learn that Gordon was from Montclair. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Child right? of the 70s. <laughs> I just, just one little known fact. Anne Hayes had lived here uh, hmm, briefly. Really? She lived on Orange Road with Richard Berge, who was in, on soap operas, and he was extras in lots of shows. Um, his brother being a drummer for uh, Billy Joel. Mm. Chucky, yeah. yeah. I, I was in sixth grade at Edgemont School with Chuck Berge. Oh, were they, they were neighbors. That's what I know. And, and, yeah. and uh, Anne yeah. Heche and Richard lived on Orange Road for a while. So we I need to it. do we need to do a parallel one of this with all the famous people who were musicians that lived oh, yeah. in Montclair. Oh, yeah, we, yeah. Used to, we used to go to sleep listening to Chucky and, and Joe Walsh jamming every night in the summer. It was kind of cool. <laughs> wow, oh, man! Oh, so cool. I'm jealous. <laughs> that was cool. 